Welcome to this episode of Small Bike Stuff. Here we have a wonderful piece of machinery. This is known as a Suzuki FR50. This is one of the second Suzuki FR50s I've featured on the channel. Funnily enough, just like the orange one, which I'll throw a clip off now, this was built by a friend of the owner of the orange one. So they both built Suzukis at the same time, but there's a ton of differences with their builds. So I'm excited to show you about the Suzuki FR50 Custom. First things first, let's go down and have a look at the engine. The engine on this thing here is what we call a Lifan. A Lifan is a copy of a Honda model that was produced in 1986. It was 100 cc's produced by Honda back in the day. And this thing here is a 125. So it's 125 cc and it's a full manual. This engine is a full manual, one down, three up. So you've got four gears total, that little annoying neutral to find there in the middle, which actually isn't that hard if you pay attention. And then we've got a carburetor coming out the side of the leg shield here. This thing used to be a two-stroke, so they came out as a 50cc three-speed two-stroke semi-automatic, but the changes on this have improved it. It's definitely a lot more rideable. You're not a hazard to traffic in the city. And the one thing I like about this is it's retaining a lot of the original features like the Suzuki FR50 leg shield and just kind of the frame shape itself. You know, while it's similar to the Honda Cub, it really, really looks, in my opinion, quite a bit better than the Honda Cub. Don't fight me. <laughs> I'm just telling you my opinion. So not only has the engine been swapped out for a reliable 125cc life end, the wheels have been modified quite a bit. And I shouldn't say the wheels, it's actually the uh, componentry around the wheels. So the brakes have been completely changed up. These were drum front and rear originally. And this thing here, as you can see, has a disc on the front. And there's also some added external sus suspension on the front there. Why? Because this traditionally has leading link suspension. So you can see the middle of the axle is about, uh, the middle of the fork is here, but the axle's way out the front here. Now traditionally when they don't have these on here, when you pull the front brake on, the front lifts a dramatic amount. And you know, some people like it, it's just a feature, it's just how they were, the Honda Cubs are the same, but this modification here, which I originally saw on Honda Cubs quite a lot back in the 20, early 2010s, this completely stiffens it up. So you do have a little bit of give there, not a dramatic amount, and the disc brake conversion, this has been done by the current owner, and this bike's about to be for sale by the way, so if you're quick enough you might be able to buy it. But he has found a disc, he's found a caliper, he's machined his own brackets, and he's hooked that up. And so now up here, when you use the brakes, you've got disc stopping power, which honestly, some people might think it's overkill, but it's really, really impressive. Another thing you'll see is these are the original wheels that have just been painted red with this uh, original chrome on the rim. So the spokes are red and they've got white walls on there, Midas white walls. So that's a two and a quarter by 17. That's a weird sizing, imperial sizing. And then if we jump to the rear, uh, the white walls needs a bit of a clean, but that's okay. We still came out to film it anyway. Has a disc, so you can see there, there's another disc that's been made to fit. Now the act of adding a disc to this isn't just as simple as bolting it on, you know, you've got to bolt it on perfectly in the center. Uh, you've got to find a way to mount the brake caliper on the rear. And um, it's, it's happened, it's been done, and it's been done really well. So disc rear, which does operate from the foot peg, uh, the foot pedal down the bottom here. And once again, you've got the white wall, and this is a 275 by 17, which is probably a bit hard to see there, but 275 by 17. So a little bit wider than the front, and it does also have the red hub and red spokes along with the original polished chrome rim. All right, controls, how does this thing operate? So you've got a key down here, so that's pretty awesome. And this key here, it's quite literally just turn it on and then you kickstart it. So we've got a kickstart down here to start it. You need to make sure it's in neutral. You're not using the clutch. Boom, one kick and it roars into life. No problem at all. Other controls, we have a switch block up here. So we've got a high and low beam for the light. We've got left and right on the turn signals with the middle to stop, and we've got a horn as well. You've got your clutch over here, which comes down to the front of the engine. So there's your clutch arm on the front of the Lifan 125 engines. On some of the 140s and other Lifans or these Chinese reproduction engines, you often see the clutch arm up around here. There is also, as we've already pointed out, a front brake, which is attached to a reservoir because there's a disc, which we've already talked about as well. So this thing here is pretty impressive. It works as it's meant to. And the thing I like about it is it's got all the things you need. You know, there's turn signals, one there and one there. There's your brake on top of the number plate mount, the brake light, sorry. And you've also got turn signals on the end of the handlebars here. So these turn signals do the job and they're actually really bright. And the cool thing about them is they stick out past your body so people can see them a lot easier if they're paying attention, which isn't always the case when you're riding a motorcycle. 
So controls are basic, but they do the job. There's also a helmet lock up here in case you wanted to keep your helmet safe. And if we lift the seat up, you'll see there's no special design on the back of this like there was on the last one, but uh, we've got a fuel tank level here as well. And you've also got the fuel filler there as well. There's some magnets here, which simply hold this quite solid on top of that tank. Modifications. Well, we've already talked about some of the modifications. The modifications that we talked about are the suspension changes on the front. Now, how has that been achieved? You'll see there's a couple of tabs that have been added on here to both sides of the fork. And then right down here, the axle's coming out a lot further than it probably usually would, and they're mounting on there. There's another modification that he's done, which is there's an internal spring inside the fork, which is still there. There's been a couple of those coils removed, so it does sit a little bit lower. But in, if you get too low, then you can get these tires coming up and rubbing here. Um, that's not an issue with this because the leading link has kind of been disabled, I guess you could say, and it no longer rises when you brake. So this thing here has the front suspension, which has been changed heavily. Uh, it's got the front disc brake setup, which is completely custom. The color obviously is completely different. The headlight, this is entirely different. Usually the FR50s have a big cluster here with a headlight and your turn signals, and they've got the speedometer on the top, but this is a set of custom bars that have been made, I believe, by the previous owner. I'm not entirely sure, but um, you know, they're uh, kind of a bent flat bar, and they actually really, really do do the job well. They're super comfortable. Um, they're not too far down, they're not too high. You feel in control of the bike and you can maneuver it around as much as you need to. Now, the wheels having the red paint in the middle and then the seat, which you can kind of see is a bit of a, like a dark, reddy brown. I don't really know the, the right word for the color. Those changes of the colors have made a big difference in the bike for me. You can look at this bike with the sun on it from this angle and you can see just how good um, all the color changes are. Turn signals, we've got LED here. I'm pretty sure this is an LED light as well. So it's got LED lights all around. Um, therefore, you're not really draining too much power out of the thing. The other customization that's worth talking about is here. So uh, this is quite simply a screw. Now, I kind of didn't want to open this because I hate putting them back on. They're always a bit of a mission, but you know, what kind of motorbike related channel doesn't actually check things out properly. So there's a custom toolbox sitting in there and this used to be the oil tank. So there's been a lot of changes on this bike. No longer needs an oil tank because why? Because it's a four stroke now. So I'm gonna take probably about 10 minutes to, oh no, we found the thread. So we can do that back up. And uh, yeah, I'll probably cut here. Now, why is this important? It's because that's Willie the Waiter. That's a brand of beer in New Zealand, Waikato. Um, and Waikato is brewed from water from the Waikato River, supposedly, or it was, I don't know. It's called dirty river water to some people. It's good beer if it's bloody cold. I'll tell you that much for free. Now, the leg shield has some custom mounts made, so it actually attaches to the bottom of the Lifan engine because obviously it didn't have that standard, so that's a bit of a change, and he's secured it, so the leg shield's not rattling around. If it's only attached here and here, then you've got a bit of flex down here, and that's been stopped by those brackets. So, customizations all around. This little rack is custom, and it's been made for it, perfect for a six pack. And uh, yeah, it does the job. I think all of these customizations are very tasteful and combined, they make one heck of a good looking bike. The only other thing that's worth mentioning that I didn't actually talk about in the customizations that you could also say is an issue is the hardtail suspension. Well, it's not suspension, is it? But the hardtail shocks, if that's not your thing, then they're pretty stiff and there's not much flex. And as you can see, you know, there's not even a finger width of a gap under there. So this is designed purely to lower it as much as possible. As you can see, you can loosen off that nut and adjust the height slightly. You know, you've got a few mils of play. But um, yeah, it's very stiff. But once again, I think all bikes have their purpose. And if you're getting this bike here because you want to go off-road and um, do jumps and stuff like that, it's just, that's not what it's for. It's for cruising, um, rolling around with your friends. Um, you could take it long distance. Like you could, com you, well, comfortably is, is debatable, but you could ride this thing from one end of the country to the other, no problem. You know, it's a life fan, it's reliable. Just check the oil once every thousand Ks, give it a change every now and then, make sure it's full of fuel, check that tire pressure and you're good to go. As I sit here and I'm about to do my summary, I realize I haven't talked about the pipe and I didn't talk about the pipe on the last FR50 as well, but that's a stainless custom pipe that comes up from the header or the uh, exhaust exit on the engine. And it's been wonderfully welded and attaches up here. The noise is directed away from you, and while it's quite raspy, you don't actually have to have it blasting right in your ear. So yeah, I think it's pretty acceptable. It's got a nice 
tiny little bit of a burble on desal, which is pretty nice. Now, I rode this thing here, obviously. I'll add some footage over the top, but really all you're gonna see is just my helmet footage of me looking down, um, changing through the gears, and um, just having fun. This thing's a really cool bike to, you know, race yourself at the lights. You, every time you take off, you blitz it as fast as you can and you're still not gonna break any speed limits. So um, top speed of something like this is probably, you know, still double digits, but it's a lot faster than it would have been stock, which I don't think makes it unsafe. I honestly think it increases, I think it increases the safety because when these things are 50 cc, take off from a traffic light, you're holding up traffic, people are impatient, you're on a small bike, you wanna be safe. So overall, this is an incredible build from a guy named Rory here in New Zealand who's about to relocate to another country. So this thing's on the market and will be flicked off. And if you are the new owner of this bike, definitely comment below and let me know what you think of it. Uh, it's a wonderful machine. It's been incredibly customized, very impeccably. And um, there's a lot of effort that's gone into this. This isn't just slapped together. There is thought and precision that has gone into every decision on this bike. So if you want a Suzuki FR50, well, this is probably the one for you. <laughs> However, if you're not living in Tauranga, New Zealand, and you don't buy it within the next month, realistically, this video will probably be out and it will be sold. Um, unfortunately, you're shit out of luck. So that's, that is what it is. The sun's back out. So we'll finish it right there. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Small Bike Stuff. Maybe we can chuck some riding footage just to uh, play it out. This thing is so fun to ride. It's just real tight.